An Indian Story Many years ago, two boys lived on a farm in New England. It was so long ago that there were few white people in this country. The farms were scattered, and around them were great forests. The houses were made of logs with strong, heavy doors. Far away in the woods lived many Indians. Sometimes the Indians would come down where the white people lived and would capture any white person whom they could find. They even dared to attack and often burned the scattered log cabins. The white prisoners would be taken to the Indian villages and would be held there as captives. One cold winter morning the two brothers, John and William, were going skating on the river. In order to reach the river they had to pass through some woods. John, the older brother, started first. He threw his skates over his back and ran off whistling toward the river. William, the younger brother, had to stay behind to fill with wood the huge box beside the fireplace. Indians had not been seen near the farm for many years, so John was not in the least afraid. As he went through the woods toward the river, two huge Indians with painted faces jumped from behind the trees where they had been hiding. Before John could run, he was caught, and his hands were tied behind his back. Then they heard William shout as he ran down the path after his brother. John knew that the Indians might kill him if he warned his brother, but he was brave, and before they could stop him he cried out, Indians! Indians! The Indians were angry and struck at John with their tomahawks. But he was not afraid. He faced the Indians bravely. William heard the shout of warning and ran like a deer back to the log cabin. The heavy door was shut with a slam, and John's father, with his rifle, waited for the Indian attack. But the two Indians did not dare attack the log cabin. Dragging John after them, they started up the river bank toward their Indian town, many, many miles away. All day long they traveled, and at night they built a small fire. Over this fire they roasted a partridge which one of them had shot. John was given his share of the bird and a handful of parched Indian corn. The Indians looked at John's skates, which still hung over his shoulder. They did not know what skates were. They thought they must be some of the white man's magic. On and on they traveled for many days, following an old Indian path. All through the long march, John still carried his skates. At length they came to the Indian village. The Indian houses were long huts covered with strips of birch bark. Four or five families lived in each of these houses. John was given to an Indian woman who had lost her own boy the year before. John's Indian mother was good to him and treated him as if he were her own son. One time the Indian boys thought they would test John's courage, so they formed in two lines while each boy held a stout stick. Then they ordered John to run down between the two long lines. They had their sticks all ready to beat him. They thought John would be afraid and so would do as they told him. But John was a strong lad, and jumping upon the first Indian boy, he took his stick away from him. Armed with this stick, John struck right and left at the heads of the boys until they were all glad to run away. The Indian men liked to see John's courage, and laughed long and loud when the Indian boys ran away. After this, the boys were glad to have John play with them. With their bows and arrows, they shot at a mark. They swam in the river and played games of tag, hide-and-seek, and ball. In the spring, the Indian women planted the yellow corn. When the corn was up, the squaws went into the fields to hoe out the weeds. For a hoe, they used a flat piece of stone tied to a wooden handle. As John was a white boy, the squaws tried to make him help hoe the corn. When John took the hoe, he hoed up the corn and left the weeds. The angry squaws made signs to him that he must not do so. Then John threw the hoe far from him. Hoeing is fit for squaws, not for warriors, he shouted. He had learned this from the Indian boys. The old men were pleased. They thought John would make a fine warrior. John had lived with the Indians a year. He had learned to speak their tongue, but they did not trust him. Some of them were always with him, for they were afraid he would run away. All this time John had kept his skates carefully hidden. One day the ice froze clear and smooth. John brought his skates down to the river bank. Many of the Indians followed to see what he was going to do. They crowded around him on the ice. 
John thought he would play a trick on them. He strapped the skates upon the feet of an Indian boy. The boy tried to stand up, but his feet slipped out from under him, and down he bumped upon the ice. How the Indians laughed! They thought it was a great joke. Each of them, in turn, tried on the skates. How they sprawled and fell upon the ice! What fun it was for the other Indians! When they were tired of the sport, they held out the skates to John, and asked him to put them on. John strapped on the skates with great care. He was a good skater, but he made believe that he could not skate at all. He fell down and bumped his head. He tripped over his toes and made great fun for the Indians. They did not see that each time he fell, he was a little farther out on the ice. All at once, John jumped up. Away he flew, skating for his life. Down the river he went, swift as a bird. The Indians rushed after him, but he had too great a start. The Indians were swift runners, but John on his skates was swifter still. He knew that the river must flow toward the ocean, and that near the ocean lived the white people. On and on he skated. Two days later he saw the smoke of a white man's cabin and knew that he was safe. John soon found his father and mother. How glad they were to see him! TCH generally has the same sound as CH. CH usually follows vowels having the long sound, while TCH usually follows vowels having the short sound. Each, teach, peach, reach, speech, bleach, screech, leech, breach, beach, coach, roach, poach, brooch, preach, fetch, stretch, itch, botch, notch, blotch, catch, sketch, crutch, pitch, latch, batch, snatch, ditch, match, hatch, patch, hutch, twitch, clutch, switch, witch, stitch, scratch, flitch,